Hello and welcome. Nice to be at your place, wherever you're watching us right around Australia. The Belgium Grand Prix. That's the one tonight. A great circuit, this one. And AJ, it's raining. Yeah, I know. Well, that uh, should be Michael Schumacher territory, but I think the... Uh... The uh, Bridgestones are pretty good. I think they've got the wood on the good years in, in wet conditions, but of course Michael Schumacher makes up for that. So uh, it always produces very exciting racing, very fast, beautiful circuit. All the drivers love it to, to race on plenty of overtaking spots. Should be a ripper. Should be something else. All right, talk about uh, a quick uh, lap and a big, big practice crash for uh, Villeneuve. Have a look at this. He was doing 290 kilometres an hour into the Eau Rouge. He rates it his best ever crash. He was laughing about it. What about this? Yeah, see, he's got a bit of understeer there and the car goes a bit light. He's jumped on the brakes. You can see the minute he realises that he's going to have the big one, he's on the brakes. That's what obviously left those big black marks. But he is a bit of a boy because he's jumped out of the car, the car and said, well, I think that's the best one I've ever had. Yeah. And let me tell you, he had a real big one in Indy racing about mm. three years ago, mm. which I, I thought would have taken a bit of topping. Mm. So that must have been a, a monumental for him to jump out and say it's the best one. He is a character, isn't he? He has a bit of a laugh and says, that is the best one I've had. All right, let's have a look at this spa track. As AJ said, all the drivers love it. This comes, of course, from Ubisoft Formula One simulation. Well, AJ? Is, well, that's the hairpin just after the start finish line that's coming out of now. And we're going down towards Eau Rouge. This is where Villeneuve had his accident. You try and get down through here flat. It's very difficult. The car's got to be beautifully set up. Just about here, the car goes light, and that's where he lost it, and he speared off to the right-hand side. But, of course, to go through there flat is very important because this is probably the fastest part of the circuit, and uh, you're in top for quite a while. And if you can get up through there flat and stick behind the guy in front of you, you can pull out and go into brakes for this right-left-hander. Now, that's a sensible type of chicane because it leads in into a right angle, which does allow you enough time to pull out and go under brakes. You go down the hill now, all fairly quick, nice flowing corners. Down we go into a left-hander. Plenty of, you know, as I said before, plenty of spots to overtake. All the drivers simply love the circuit. It's a bit dicey weather-wise, though, because... Um, you know, you can literally on this circuit, it's not as bad as the old original circuit, which used to be about, you know, twice the length of this one. Um, but it can literally be raining on one side of the circuit and, and virtually dry on the other. So that makes it a bit tricky, but uh, just a beautiful circuit to, to drive on. Well, it's one of the last of the great racetracks, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And even though this is a modified one, it's, as I said before, it's only half the distance of the original one. From here on in, you're virtually flat chat now. You're going up through the gears, gathering speed. Uh, through all these sweepers, just absolutely flat. And uh, you come up to probably, which is the worst corner of the lot, which is a little thing called the pit stop, the bus stop, which is this thing here. Um, you're no sooner out of one little chicane, you're into the other, and you enter the pits on the right-hand side here, and this is where the start-finishing line is. You can see the grid positions in front of you, down into the first, um, possibly a first gear uh, hairpin. Magnificent stuff. All right, let's get out of the simulator, put you back in a race car. Peter Nugent has all the qualifying highlights for us. The McLaren team now has qualifying down to a fine art. World Championship leader Mika Hakkinen grabbing his ninth pole for the season. It's just what the Finn needed as he tries to stay ahead in the title race. Importantly for Hakkinen, his teammate David Coulthard is right beside him. Following the McLaren Quinella is Damon Hill, the 1996 world champion in the Jordan, continuing to improve. Fourth on the grid is Michael Schumacher. Spa is one of his favourite tracks, having won the Belgian Grand Prix four times. Eddie Irvine in the second Ferrari is fifth on the grid, but he had a memorable moment at the bus stop. Mika Salo could still manage a smile, or maybe it was a terrified grin after he walked away from this frightening high-speed crash. Well, as Murray Walker would say, spin, spin, spin. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there's the grin, the two McLarens dominating yet again. Damon Hill, another great result from him. Fourth in Hungary, third here, really on the improvement trail. Michael Schumacher, fourth. His quickest lap uh, was disallowed because they said he did under a yellow flag, but his next quickest lap would have only put him in fourth anyway, so it was no real better off. Eddie Irvine, his teammate in fifth. Villeneuve, sixth. Fisichella, seventh. Ralph Schumacher, in eighth. Frenson, ninth. Alacy, tenth. Wurtz, eleventh. Down for him. Johnny Herbert, twelfth. Truly, Barrichello. Panis, Deniz, Verstappen. Mikasalo, eighteenth. 
Takagi, Rosette, Nakana and Turu, as usual, bringing up uh, the rear. Now, there's been a lot of points of interest that have come out of the Grand Prix world in the last couple of weeks or so. One of them, you won't believe this, I mean, we're talking about terrorists right around the world, a bomb threat. Now, a Belgian newspaper has received a letter stating that Bernie Eccleston must donate 10 million Belgian francs, which is about 250,000 US dollars, to a Sudanese medical relief fund for the night's race could be stopped by terrorists. The German media also reported that a separate threat was received in Brussels to damage Michael Schumacher's car, and both were taken very seriously, and extra security measures were taken at the track and also Ferrari, which incidentally is their 600th Grand Prix this time round. That's an amazing record. Now, as the end of the silly season could be in sight as early as the Italian Grand Prix, the fate of several drivers could be decided by then, including Heinz Harold Frentzen, Alex Zanardi, Damon Hill, and teammate Ralph Schumacher. Now, this is the bombshell. The young German and his current team have taken out injunctions against each other as Ralph tries to move to the Williams team and Jordan tries to keep him. That's come out of left field. Yeah, it's a little bit surprising because I was under the impression that he'd actually signed for Jordan at the British Grand Prix. And, um, you know, really, I mean, if the guy has signed to drive for Jordan, then that's, that's what he's done. And what's happened now is taking out injunctions is all very well and good, but there's a lot of damage there in the relationship that, uh, you know, if, if the court proves that he has to stay and so forth and so on, they're not going to have that happy relationship. That's gone. There's some pictures coming in now. You can see the rain, the umbrellas are up and uh, everything very, very damp at the moment. So this is going to be a very exciting Grand Prix. And this terrorist thing, I mean, it is now out of control. I mean, obviously that's over the bombing. Uh, the Americans pulled off, uh, what, last week. But, I mean, it's just getting out of control, isn't it? Well, there's not even an American car or driver in Grand Prix racing. So I don't know, I don't know what all that's about. But I think irrespective of Formula One or anything, I think any sport shouldn't be held to ransom on a political issue like that. It's ridiculous. Well, there he is, the, the boy that had the uh, the big one, uh, Jacques Villeneuve. He's uh, sitting and looking pretty relaxed as he wipes the Bowser. All right, now, uh, remember that we've got our competition going for that driving suit, the uh, Mika Hakkinen driving suit. We've had a tremendous response to that, so keep those phone calls going. More about that later. We'll take a break, come back. This will be a beauty. Buckle up and get ready. <laughs> Working late? I shouldn't be too late. I'll see you later. <laughs> 